Good morning. Welcome to Making Stuff with Chris Deha. For today's topic, we're going to address an issue that will come up frequently if you use the Raspberry Pi Picos along with battery power and of course you're programming it and diagnosing the program and all that with a USB cable. And the question that comes up, can I use a USB cable plugged in to a Pico and at the same time the circuit is also powered by battery cells? The issue is this, um, if they were both, if the voltages were both perfectly identical at entry into the Pico, there would be no imbalance and current wouldn't be flowing from the USB into the battery or from the battery back into the USB. And that can create, uh, well, let's start with a dangerous side. It can create a dangerous condition. You could actually overcharge, so to speak, the, the battery, depending on its type, and create a fire hazard. Um, I myself personally have done it many, many times, way more than I probably should admit to, um, but I have gotten a lot more disciplined in the last year or two, and especially with this project over here, which is the Zoom Town experiment, where I've got a whole bunch of these things, or will have a whole bunch of these things running around simultaneously. Uh, they're little autonomous robots, and they're powered by two 18650 uh, lithium ion cells. And um, of course, I have them connected via USB during this debugging process. Otherwise, debugging would be far, far more complex and lengthy than I would like it to be. So I kind of have two things that I'm covering in this video with this specific topic. The first is I do all my programming here at this computer where you see me filming, but the zoomies are way over there up to, oh, I think the longest distance as the crow flies is probably 12 feet, a uh, couple of meters, uh, three meters, give or take a little bit. So USB just doesn't work over that distance. Uh, even with an extension cable, it would reach, but there just isn't enough current in the USB elect electrical aspect to transmit reliably over that distance. So I have picked up this thing. It's uh, from Blue Rigger. It's an active extension cable. This one's only USB 2, but so are those. Um, but what it does is it's kind of like a booster cable. It has additional, we'll call it additional current to help the signal uh, get from uh, one end to the other. And you would plug your USB cable that you're connecting in like so, and then connect, you'll see there's an end missing here, that'll make sense in a minute, but then you plug your uh, local USB cable straight into your Pico or Pico W. Uh, so I've got this extension cable, and just so you're aware, it's 10 meters long. It's a long one, and uh, it goes uh, from a computer over here, across this way, up to the ceiling, all the way over, and then hangs down above uh, the layout where we call Zoom Town. So that's the purpose of this cable. And uh, of course, the purpose of the regular USB cable is so I can connect to it and monitor different uh, behaviors uh, to make adjustments to the program, etc. Now, if you talk to the electronic people who are primarily electronic first and then microcontroller second, they're going to explain to you that you have to use a MOSFET between the USB cable or the battery power and the Pico W so that the two can't, the two paths of electricity sources can't affect each other. And then that gets a little bit more complicated, especially if you've got a mature design and you don't want to back up, add that circuitry just for the purpose of uh, giving the ability to have USB connected while you're debugging. So 
This is, goes back about a year or so now. I came up with a different methodology. Uh, just seemed logical to me at the time and it's worked out brilliantly good and simple and frankly very uh, inexpensive and easy to do. I just simply remove the power source from the USB. Uh, simple as that is, you don't need power coming from USB to do the communications. That would be on your send receiver, your data cables, data wires, but you do need a common ground. And that way everything stays in balance uh, with the same uh, potential. So I just simply get rid of the power wire and that's really easy to do. So I'm going to show you how I go about that. Uh, I'm going to use a different cable than the one we'll end up with, but I just take a USB cable that I've got and I do it usually on this end of them for this purpose because this will usually be uh, more secure if it's attached to say the Zoomy this side's going to get moved around a lot etc so on the uh, A end I that's where I will usually do it uh, but what I'm going to do very simply just have a pair of side cutters and right in here, I'm going to loop it over itself. This one's got a natural bend in it. And I'm just going to start cutting away. And I'm not going to go real deep. I'm just going to take a bite. Cut off. Now you can see I'm just starting to break through the insulation. So we'll just keep whittling away at it. Oh, look at that. I've already got right there's our red wire. That's the one we're after. Almost all USB cables use red for the power, black for the zero volt or ground as it's often called, and then the other two wires would be your data. Now I'm doing this at arm's length and I can't really see very well that far, so if I nick a wire, uh, please bear with me. I'll get one more cut in here. All right, so what I'm after is that red wire. And I am going to come down. I want to get underneath all the wires. Now you could just do this. In fact, let's do that for this example. I'm going to take a very small screwdriver, reach in there, and grab the power. Cut it. Now, if there's metallic shielding in here, you would probably be better off leaving these long and putting a shrink wrap over them so that the conductor does not contact that metal shielding. This is non-shielded. Now, at this point, I don't have to worry about it, but I do have this nasty looking thing here. On my last uh, cable that I had, uh, I wrapped it with electrical tape, and over time, you know, that gets gooey and sticky and all that. But uh, you'll see why that's kind of the best option here in a moment. But this is all we're really doing. I eliminate the power source from USB from getting to the Pico by trimming off or cutting the red wire. And isn't that always a line in the movies? It's the red wire. So now... We will <clears throat> get back to the one that I'm actually working on, my replacement cable, so I can get back to experimenting. As I mentioned, on the small end, the micro end, that would plug into it. I don't do any cutting there. I just want uh, you know, that part of the cable to be as strong as can be. Now, I did try to find uh, a piece of shrink wrap or heat shrink tubing that would fit over the end. And this is a little bigger than I want it. My next smallest size uh, couldn't fit, so I'm gonna give this one a shot. I'll slide that down. To this end. Slide it over that, and then I'm going to try to shrink that, and hopefully it'll shrink enough. I don't think it will but it's worth a try. At least it'll look better than uh, electrical tape. Oh, yeah. 
hit it with my heat gun. This will take a few seconds. And unfortunately, that's all the shrink she's got. So I will see if I've got any other shrink wrap tubing before I call this project good. If not, I'll have to revert back to electrical tape. Now let's get back to the whole point of this video, and that is to be able to take our USB, plug it into our project, even if the project is wired uh, with battery input or battery power or even external power for that matter. And uh, just to demonstrate it, I'm going to take our cable, my USB cable, plug it into my active extension cable. You could plug it directly into the USB port on your computer. Here's our Raspberry Pi Pico. It's powered by two 18650 cells in series. So that goes back in there. We'll put in my contact. Clip. And as you can see, when I turn the, the toggle switch, it is alive. And it could actually function if my program was labeled main.py, but it is not at this time. But I can turn it on, and when I go to plug in my USB cable, you'll probably hear, hopefully the sound is up enough, you'll hear uh, the Windows computer recognize there's a USB present. There we go. And from here, now I'm able to uh, update the program, monitor variable outputs or any other data output uh, on my computer while this thing is running around its course back there on the Zoomtown experiment. Now we talked about uh, the reason being uh, to do all this or go to this extra step has to do with safety. But there's another concern as well. When your power supply to your projects is out of balance, as we would have with USB and battery power or any other type of external power supply, unless they're perfectly balanced, meaning they're at exactly the same voltage, uh, you're going to get electrical problems. And the way it manifested itself to me over the last couple of years as I've been tinkering with the Pico would have been, first I noticed it uh, problematic with analog. Any analog input would get kind of odd if the voltages weren't the same. And the more uh, uh, deviation from the same it got, the worse the problem was. So it affected uh, analog inputs. I also ran into it with I squared C devices. I squared C devices seem to be, and these are the little uh, inexpensive modules, seem to be very sensitive about voltage or power supply. I've had numerous uh, problems or issues with different types of sensors if there wasn't enough voltage or good voltage or current coming in. Well, having two different power supplies creates additional problems. And in the case of this particular little robot car, I'm using uh, AS5600 encoders here to measure my wheel rotation, two of them, on two different I2C interfaces. And then I'm using this uh, QR code reader called, uh, I think it's called the Tiny Code Reader, and it's from a company called Useful Sensors and it reads QR codes. Very cool little device and I'm using it in a very unusual application and uh, but that's a subject of another uh, whole, whole series called our Zoomtown experiment. Anyhow before I go off on another tangent uh, if you're doing what I've been doing on and off over the years powering it with USB and batteries I suggest you make up one of these cables like this guy they're very inexpensive to obtain, very easy to modify. It just requires a side cutter. If you got an X-Acto knife, you could do this modification. Uh, wrap it up, shield it somehow after the fact, and now you've got a USB cable you can use specifically for 
uh, battery powered projects with your Raspberry Pi Pico. So that'll wrap this one up for you. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.